I'm your Slocum 33, you're joining me for AME 3, Chapter 8, All in the Family. The day after the couple's get away with Mackenzie. You march into the confessional, expecting Omar to be waiting for you in front of the camera. Only to find a nervous Wren pacing in the room instead. Wren, what are you doing here? Oh, I was just, uh... They wring their hands together, crumpling with their notes. I I'm giving my first confessional interview, Jen and Omar handling some things last minute, so they asked me to step in. Wait, I'm the first contestant you've interviewed? This is such a special moment. Like, I'm honored. Well, let's see if you uh, feel that way afterwards. With my luck, I'll end up tongue-tied. Ah, uh, self-doubt is the enemy of uh, greatness. You've got this. Only one way to find out. Why don't we get started? You take your seat in front of the camera, and Rin takes a deep breath before launching into the very first question. Okay, what was supposed to be a romantic evening on the island didn't go as planned. Now that it's had its time to sink in, what do you really think of Ivy crashing your date? On the moment, it definitely took me uh, by surprise, but now I've realized... That's supposed to be Ivy's fault. Between being uh, stood up by Vince and lied to by Omar, the poor thing just couldn't catch a break. If you say so. Now, what about this week? Rand frowns before fumbling through their notes, tearing through some of the page after page with smudges and strike throws. I, I know it's here somewhere. Uh, Rin, you might want to... Rand takes a page, turns a page to roughly, ripping it from its clip. The remaining page is loosened, and within seconds, they litter the confessional room floor. Oh! Uh, slow down, man. You lean forward to help them, only to notice that something scribbled upon down on their arm. Any chance that's what you're looking for? Rand glances at the scroll and looks visibly relieved. Right, today's the day you meet your in-laws, which means your mom's gonna be on set any minute now. How psyched are you? Uh, very. She's, uh, stevious I am, where I get my natural beauty, like my mom and best friend rolled into one. We tell each other everything, so I'm dying to catch her up on the all things AME. You two sound close. Ah, uh, we are. She's an amazing sports system when, uh, I do get to see her. Sooner than you think. And uh, you may need her more than ever, because Mackenzie's family is visiting too. Do you think you'll make a good impression? I'm sure they'll love me. Because my mom raised me right. I'll make uh, beautiful grandbabies. They'd be fools not to. I'm just gonna go with my mom raised me right, but my mom didn't raise me, so... In our house, manners, integrity, and respect weren't optional. And all these years later, they still haven't gone out of style. Oh, yes, they have. Are you serious? In these years, you're going to be America's favorite in-law. Ah, I just want to prove Mackenzie's heart is in the good hands. Rain turns off the camera, and you watch a little red light go dark before they turn to you with a serious look. Be honest, how would I do? Not bad for your first time. A little more practice, and you'll uh, be like an old pro. Thanks. Not sure if I could tell, uh, or if you could tell, but I was a little nervous. Oh, you don't say. I'm sure you'd be uh, sweating bullets, too. I mean, it's not every day you meet your future, future in-laws. Um, actually, I feel a little... Ah, uh, school's a cucumber. This might be my first radio. I shake a few hands, say all the right things, and I'm home free. Talk about cool under pressure. When I met my girlfriend's family, I was a wreck. How'd that go? I asked her uh, every question I could think of for two weeks straight, only for her parents to welcome me without open arms. But that doesn't mean you should go un in unprepared, especially if you want to win today's challenge. I hardly know anything about Mackenzie's parents. In two seasons, it's never came up, and now we're out of time. Well, why don't you grab Mackenzie and your wedding squad for a crash course and everything parental right now? You can get to know your in-laws before you even meet them, and the rest of your wedding party could help. You know, that's not a bad idea for diamonds. Learn more about the family. Remember, Pokemon. November 15th. Please tune in. First impressions are crucial. I've got to find Mackenzie. Good luck, John. I've got fingers crossed for you. you walk in the living room to find Mackenzie chatting with Jen, Adam, and Derek. I'm so nervous. I changed six times this morning. And yet, it doesn't look like once. That's insane. 
A workout? I'll take option C, all of the above. Uh, glad to know I'm not the only one who's nervous. Before we meet uh, the parents, we should prep each other for what to expect. Count me in. If there's a chance of uh, finding out what the two makes you two tick, we went in. Uh, we'll take all the help we can get. Let's meet on the roof in five. You, Mackenzie, and your friends regroup on the roof. As you settle in around the table, you look to Mackenzie. Okay, tell me everything I need to know about your dad. Are you kidding? I wouldn't know where to start. Well, how about the beginning? After all, John's gonna need to know your family inside and out if he's gonna make a good impression. Well, that might take a little longer than we have. You should start with how well uh, you get along with him. Whether you see eye to eye, can say a lot about a person. Oh, that's a good idea. But this is also about making John feel comfortable meeting him. What do you want to know, John? Well, it's as important as it is to know Mackenzie's relationship with her family. I really want to know how I can impress them. Being a parent is hard enough without trying to appeal to a demographic. I need a cheat sheet. Oh, I see your point. Well, there's got to be some advice Mackenzie can give you. Mackenzie, you know your family better than any of us. What do you think John should know about them? Uh, Dad sneezes with his eyes open. Oh. Okay, that's disgusting. No, it is. I've seen people's eyes, like, kind of, like, pop out. And it's like, no. I didn't even think that was possible. No, it is. It's as interesting as that is. I don't think that's really gonna help John today. Sorry. There's so much I could say. I'm blanking on what it's need to know. What if, uh... Would it help if Derek, Jen, and I go first? I'll give you an example of what's important. And John can learn more about our families, too. Works for me. Why don't we start with... Derek. Okay, what's important uh, things to know about your parents? Probably that they're polar opposite. My dad's a fun-loving free spirit from Colorado, while my mom's more of a particular type. She was born in ha Haiti and immigrated to the U.S. as a, a kid in the 70s. That's so cool. I'm sure it has its moments. Having immigrant immigrant parents can be complicated. I love having that connection to my culture. And uh, I've even gone to visit where she grew up. But it made me realize how much she sacrificed for us to have the life that we have. Sometimes I just feel like anything less than success is letting her down. That's a whole lot to put on one person. Especially when there are so many different uh, types of success. Well, not to her. Not in her book. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, those are careers she wishes I'd join. And, um, I've thought about it. I know it would make her happy, but... <clears throat> but you don't want to be pretend to be someone you're not. You may be an analyst, analytical genius, but I've seen you work. You belong in the arts, and you know it. I love my mom, and I know she just wants me to be stable, just living a, a rich and fulfilling life that takes more than money. Sometimes all I need to do is goof around with my friends. Now, the best way to honor is, uh, her as a sacrifice is uh, with your happiness, and everything else will come. Alright, give me the lowdown on Mama and Papa McIntyre. Well, their hearts are in the right place, but my parents are massive worry wards. I guess that's my fault. After the way Season 9 ended for me, I wasn't uh, really in the best headspace. I don't see how you could have been. Vincent Sierra's plan was brutal. That was the night the bad boy of AME was born. Overnight, you were like a completely different person. I saw the clips of your time in the jury house. You were cold, man. If you became someone they didn't recognize, that's enough to make any parent worry. Well, once they saw how guarded the show made me, they turned them against uh, reality TV. If they had their way, I'd have had uh, never s step foot on set again. But uh, you're so much better now. If nothing else, Amy showed you who your real friends are, and they're not. Uh, they've got to at least see that. You no, know, I think it's been. Uh, it's hard getting that image of me out of their heads before I was at their perfect loving son. Now when they look at me... 
All they can see is the wall you put up. And it's like they can't get past it. Exactly. The way they look at me, I just want the... I just feel like they're waiting on the other shoe to drop. Well, they uh, aren't going to hate me because uh, you uh, came back for the wedding, are they? Not a chance. Before I left, my mom mentioned that uh, it'd be good for me to be around someone as open as you. Well, then I'm glad to be of service. Alright, were your parents strict growing up, Jen? Um, well, that's one word for it. My dad was in the military, so discipline and order were always priority. Like, he and mom wanted the best for me, and uh, but living like that placed duty over fun. I always did what I wanted, and never had, never what I wanted, or had to what I never wanted. That had to be rough, tough. I can't imagine having to go toe the company line even as a kid. It's part of why I wanted to be a flight attendant. We moved because someone said so. They flew because they were free to. Not to mention you'd be in uh, control of snakes. Oh, when you put it like that, it sounds like a perfect fit. What uh, changed? Everything. Jen's eyes water and her gaze falls to the floor. You watch her wipe away a tear and reach out to hold her hand. My dad was killed during his deployment, and after that, nothing was the same. My mom, especially. She stopped caring about my own homework and encouraged me to do things I loved. It's how I found producing. When I asked her why, she said losing dad was put everything into perspective. Sounds like she wanted you to live life to the fullest. You attack everything with pure passion, Jim. She just wanted you to have a life that you were crazy about. I'm sure they both did. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't miss him, but I know he'd be proud of me. Um, that's one thing for sure. I know I am. Thanks, John. Okay, I think I've got the hang of this. Perfect, so tell me. Tell me about your dad, Mackenzie. Is he cool? Is your little sister Natalie? Cooler. As cliche as it sounds, I've got the best dad in the world. Right from the start, he never saw me as anything less than his daughter. He's patient, easy to talk to, kind, selfless. So basically, everything my mother isn't. Whoa, I've never heard you mention your mom. On your audition reel, you said you grew up with a single father. I did. My mom left us 15 years ago. No, no, no explanation. Just an empty closet where her clothes should have been. That had to be terrible. Oh, Pixelberry. I'm kind of impressed. You made uh, the dad take uh, care of someone instead of the mom. Thank you for recognizing men like me. It was worse for Natalie. My dad was a mess, and she didn't understand what was happening. I had to take care of everything. But you were just a kid. That's why he asked me to stop helping. He said it was like watching his worst fear come true. I can see why, it's obvious. He was worried you would... your life taking care of everyone else. You were just a kid. That's an impressionable time to take on such a huge responsibility. I thought handling it all alone made me strong, but Dad taught me that my constant strength helped everyone but me. His favorite thing to say is, strength is for workhorses and machines. You're only human, Mackenzie. Wise words. He'd never say so, but I can tell nothing would make my dad happier than to see me taken care of for a change. Kenzie, thank you for sharing that with me. I know being uh, vulnerable isn't easy. I'm just 
have you trust me enough to let me in. You're gonna be my husband. I feel like I can tell you anything. Well, this has definitely been a bonding experience. I never would have guessed any of those things you guys told me. You play it pretty close to the vest. You're one to talk. You're the biggest mystery of all. What? Me? I'm an open book. I wouldn't go that far. You've heard all about our families and I don't even know your mom's name. Well, that's easy. Okay. Alright. Fine. Tammy. Well, that's one less thing to worry about. You have nothing to be afraid of. Once she sees how happy you make me, she'll welcome you into the family with open arms. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, uh, if you really want to get on our good side, you should compliment her. Mind your manners. Dote on me. Oh, because dote. These words. They make no sense. I have to Google this in the word. I don't know, compliment or... <sighs> I guess compliment or whatever. But I think all those options were shit, but... Whoever said that flattery could get you anywhere must have had my mom in mind. Well, time to turn up the charm. I'll keep an eye out for just the right moment. The heavy metal doors open and Rand pokes her head out. It's showtime. Are you all ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Or will ever be. On set, you and Mackenzie, Ivy, and Vince lead your wedding parties out on the patio as they take their places in the stands. You hit your mark and scan the set. We see a familiar face standing next to Carson and the judges. Ready for your TV debut? Uh, it's about fitting. As ready as I'll ever be. Vinny, Chadley, Lancey, and Liam, and me, and I may judge you professionally, but for this challenge, we're relying on people who have done it all your lives. Please welcome our guest judges, your families. When you look again, you realize your mother isn't alone. Next to her stands a row of men and women, some resembling older versions of your friends. One face among them looks uh, back at you with a grin. Hey, John. Long time no see. You're telling me. It's so good to have you back in Miami. Are you going to let him have a family reunion, or are we going to get on with it? Why are you so angry? Shocked, you look the woman up and down. Am I supposed to know her? I'm sorry, who are you? I don't know. I'd know her anywhere. Let me guess your mother. John Lee, meet Miss Blue Bonnet Bell, 1987. Dahlia Fisher, also known as Ivy's mom. Oh my god. Well, one, how did you know all that information? Two, oh god, it all makes sense now. Enchante. Uh, charmed him, sure. Now today's challenge is all about getting in your in-laws, good graces, or so our panel consists of. Gail and Ennis McIntyre, David and Natalie Harris, Elliot and Patricia Taylor, and Marcelia Espinoza. One by one, each of you will answer time questions about your fiance by one of your attendant's parents. Your response will be judged for exactitude by your fiancé's family. And we'll judge you for maximum heartthrobness. Any questions? I heard you loud and clear. But uh, aren't you guys forgetting something? What's the prize? Usually this is when you throw on a monkey on a jet ski or diamond crusted tie clip or well something. 
a fooling relationship with your parents' partners. Your partner, parents. All I've ever wanted, cool, I guess. It? I want more. It's all I've ever wanted. I don't think Mackenzie talks about uh, them so much. I feel like we're already family. Jen's mom. The family is as much a matter of choice as a matter of birth. Well, in that case, Mackenzie's been my family with the, from the moment she proposed. The relationship's not the only thing at stake. With the couple that knows each other the best will win a glamorous wedding shower picnic catered by a Miami's top private chef. While oh, the losing couple will be left to DIY it in their cottage living room. Well, obviously, we know which one my Ivy will be taking. I wouldn't exactly call it a sure thing. We will see about that. When we get back, Mackenzie and John will each face the other's parents to battle it out in the name of love. Stay tuned. Welcome to Amy. Save us all. Brrr. Cut. Let's set up the Q&A. Mackenzie, you're up first. Vince and Ivy, John, you can wait inside. A short while later, Omar pokes his head into the living room. John, we're ready for you. Uh, who knew this would be uh, the first time I'd meet my new family? They'd be judging me on national television. If you can win over millions of AME fans, charming Mackenzie's family should be easy. Just think of what you know about Mackenzie, and given the answers, the judges will lie. Keep that in mind, and you'll do better than you think. Uh, that doesn't sound so bad. Ha! 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 The firm hand Omar guides you to the threshold of the patio. But whatever you do, don't just stand there with your mouth open. Dead air is bad for ratings. Wait. Before you can finish, he gives you a gentle push right out into the spotlight. As you make your way to the stage, you and Mackenzie cross paths, and you take in how confident she looks. I take it you aced all your questions. You are my favorite subject. Mmm, fancy picnic, here we come. Mackenzie gives your hand a quick squeeze before sliding by and disappearing into the crowd that gathered behind the cameras. When you reach the end of the catwalk, you take a deep breath and step into the place directly opposite the panel of the parents. Cameras come to life and your wedding party begins to cheer loudly from the stands. Just off camera, Mackenzie gives you a quick thumbs up. I don't know, there are people on my side. The roar quiets down, and without missing a beat, Carson launches back into the show. Now, John, just a bit ago, your mother and other team, John McKenzie parents, grilled McKenzie like a rack of lambs. You've got to be wondering what her parents have in store for you. I just hope they go easy on me. I can handle anything they throw at me. McKenzie is my soulmate, and I'm ready to prove it. That's the spirit. Well then, let's get down to business. John, it's time to meet your future in father-in-law, David Harris. And of course, you already know me. It's nice to meet you, David. Likewise, my daughter speaks highly of you. To start things off, your first question will come from Adam's parents, Gail and Enos McIntyre. My husband and I have been married almost 30 years, and every day we fall more in love with each other. So what do you love most about McKinsey? Strength, determination, patience. I love her determination. When she sets her sights on something she wants, she's in for the long haul. That's my girl. I've on the career, the possible. Uh, Mackenzie uh, reminds me that I can do anything. I have no clue what the bland ceiling just said. As the parents move to stand with the other family members, Carson takes center stage. Our next question will be brought to you by Derek's parents, Elliot and Patricia Taylor. Elliot moves in a place at the podium, a jovial smile on his face. In uh, marriage, you should fit together like pieces of a puzzle. 
how are you go a good fit for Mackenzie? I have... I have her back. She won't admit it, but uh, Mackenzie is afraid to depend on people. I want to prove that she can always count on me. After everything she's gone through, she deserves that. It sounds as if John is raising the bar. She deserves nothing but the best. Well, David and Natalie have opted to ask the final question themselves. Life has taught Mackenzie to rely on herself, and because of that, she always has been stronger than she should have had to be. When you're married, how do you plan to make your life easier for her? Mackenzie says she thinks her dad wants to see her be taken care of. Plan is to... I would say figure it as we go, but also take care of your maid. The relationship is really 50-50. Like it is. And then, you know, if your partner gets sick or ill or, you know, whatever, I mean, you, you, you need to, you know, help take care of that slack. But, you know, you're supposed to take care of your mate, not just abandon them. And a lot of people don't know that concept. If handling things, um... So she doesn't have to will help her de-stress and I'm all for it I just want to see her happy well it's like waking up to find my protein shake already made just a little gift from past Chadley to future Chadley solid plan if you really want to score points with her keeping coffee handy and take out on speed dial way out of you I've already made pizzeria uh, do an emergency contact Mackenzie's family may have finished the quiz, but one more question remains. Did John impress his future in-laws? Oh, my little girl's getting married. My little girl's going to college. What my dad means is we're happy you do have each other. Don't mind me. I always cry at happy endings. My parents have spoken, but will John and Mackenzie's combined performance be enough to win? We'll have to wait and see. Now you know him and you've blocked him on Twitter. You still hate, like, his selfies on Pictogram. Please welcome Vince. Oh, can we please watch this just slow dumpster fire train wreck happen? As the camera pans to Vince, Rain ushers you down the catwalk and back inside. No! Don't do this to me! Fuck you, Ren! Inside, you and Mackenzie pace the room as Vince and Ivy shoot their scenes on the patio. I don't think I've sweat so much in my life. Thank goodness that's over. Bro, your chest is open. Shut up. Just think. If it was tough for us, it'll be like ten times harder for Vince and Ivy. We'll just have to sit back and hope they crack under pressure. Mackenzie, we've got this in the bag. There's no way Vince and Ivy know each other as well as we do. This challenge is as good as ours. I'm taking the confidence, John. Keep that up, and we'll be making our way down the aisle in no time. Man raps on the door jam with their knuckles. We're ready for you two. You take Mackenzie's hand and yours, and the two of you head for the patio. Here goes nothing. You and Mackenzie join Vince and Ivy on stage, and as you face your wedding party's parents, you saw each person's expression. Only to be met with a row of smiling faces, Mackenzie's family gives you a gentle wave. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship, unless there's a plot twist and her mother comes out of somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to announce this week's challenge winner. It was a tight race. But the victorious couple really prove they love each other for their spouse. They feel for their spouse is genuine. There is no doubt that they know each other inside and out. The lucky couple that'll be celebrating their upcoming nuptials in style is John and Mackenzie. Yes. I wasn't worried in the slightest. Mackenzie, I told you before my favorite dessert is fruit cake. How could you get that wrong? Oh God, you're like the only person on this planet that enjoys fruit cake. And I told you, Ivy Kins. I thought you were joking because who likes fruit cake? I, I can, you know what? It is the only time ever that I will agree with Vance. Uh-oh, sounds like a storm's a-brewing. Eh, you shouldn't feel too bad about losing, Ivy. It's not your fault. 
Mackenzie and I are two of a kind. Hmm. No. Well, mm, yeah, mm, eh, two of a kind. No, what? I mean, I, I kind of get it. Two of a kind. We're one of a kind. Eh, that's so stupid. I'm actually gonna go with someone doesn't know his bride to be. What kind of groom forgets the most basic information? It's almost like you aren't actually in love or something. You know what? The crew all train the cameras on Vince's clouded face, bracing themselves to catch his explosion, but sensing them, he stops in his tracks. Careful, fans. We don't need a repeat of last season, do we? Congratulations, John. Right, well... That's all we have for today. Tune in next time as the parents join the couples for wedding showers. Until then, this has been America's Most Eligible Wedding Edition. You know, half the time I don't know whether to call it that or, you know, like what I usually call it. And we're clear. Thanks, everybody. That was great. Hardly. Dahlia storms over her daughter, red-faced and steaming. You call that drama? You didn't even pull hair once. If this is how you play, it's no wonder you lost last season. But, Mom, I... Ivy's voice trails off, and the set grows eerily silent as the cast and crew awkwardly try not to stare. She looks to Vince for help, but he ducks her gaze until, finally, her eyes land squarely on you. Ivy, you don't have to take them. Excuse me? You're excused. Get the f off my set, too, while you're at it. She deserves better. For just a second, Ivy's eyes soften. Thanks, John. And then Dahlia whips around and Ivy's face falls flat. Come on, John. I think we better give them some privacy. You and Mackenzie slip inside to lounge on the couch in each other's arms and take in the results. It's official. I know you like the back of my hand. You definitely came through out there. Everyone was really impressed. Now, all that's left to do is head back to the cottage and regroup. I wouldn't say that's all that's left. You look to the doorway to see your mother walk into the room, smiling violently. Ah, oh, Christ! Mom! Off! Oh wondering when I'd see you. Launch off the couch, and she pulls you into a giant hug. Ah, oh, only some parents were like this. I missed you so much. Kenzie clears her throat, drawing your attention back. Right, well, uh, you two met out there, but this is the first official meeting. Mom, Mackenzie, Mackenzie, this is my mom. It's nice to see you, with all the lights and cameras. The same here, Miss Lee. Ah, you have no idea how happy I am to see you. After spending the morning with Dahlia, I can imagine. If Ivy's anything like her mother, winning this sweating won't be easy. Um, she may have inherited Dahlia's nastiness, but Ivy and Vince... Don't stand a chance. Mackenzie and I are in this for the long haul. We have to bond. We have a bond, just can't be broken. Mackenzie takes your hand, strokes your knuckles with her thumb. There isn't a showman's in the world that can keep me from making you my husband. Until at the very end of this, Mackenzie looks at you in front of the priest and says no and walks away. I'll disturb more AME drama. Calling it now. He either gives Mackenzie a long look before seemingly deciding something. I had my reservations when John told me he was engaged on TV, but it's hard to hold out when you two are so cute together. Thanks, Mom. I just wish you uh, two had known each other to, uh, way away from this mansion. How about we get lunch and get to know each other properly? I'll give you the deeds on our family, and I think I've even got some of John's baby pictures in my wallet. How can I say no to baby John? Count me in. I was a fat thing, okay? Leave me alone. That just leaves you, kiddo. What do you think? Kenzie does deserve to know what she's marrying into. 
we'll have fat babies. They'll turn into really actually handsome children, which then everyone at school, because they're jealous, will call them fat to throw them into, like, depression and anxiety to end up making them go fat. Also, genetics. Dig deeper into McKinsey and Child of Noon. I wish our outfit would change. No offense, Pixelberry, but you know, really. There's no way I can pass up an afternoon with my two favorite people. Let's do it. If you don't mind, I think I know the perfect place. Not at all. Lead the way. On your walk to the restaurant. Good McKenzie, give your mother tour the city that's become your second home. A bit mirror they really changed the car in this scene, but can never give McKenzie a new outfit. Before coming to a stop outside the restaurant, perched right over the water. And here we are. Pesco for De Croix, the most popular place on the pier. I thought the waitlist here was at least six months long. Normally, yes, but the Mater D is a fan. Looks like there are some perks of raising a reality star. Walk in and immediately are shown to a table outdoors. The view is stunning, and it's nothing compared to the two of you. Well, aren't you a charmer? Mother turns to you with a mischievous ah, look in her eye. I like this one already. Me too. Kinsey is uh, my partner in crime. If I'm in trouble, she's not far behind. Mackenzie's always on my side. Then I guess I should apologize for sticking it to you during the challenge. Oh, Mom, you didn't. I didn't mean to. The other parents just had such great questions. No offense taken. It's natural to be curious about who's joining your family. I have a few questions myself. Including what John was like to as a kid. Are there any embarrassing stories you can tell me? No, shut up. I don't know about embarrassing stories, but I've got plenty of pictures of him in the tub with a baby or bubble beard. <sighs> hey, Mom, you see that water over there? Mm, I'm gonna drown your ass. Don't do it. Hey, hey. But why ask me when you can hear things straight from the horse's mouth? What do you say, John? Are you up for it? Fire away. Okay, you and your mom are obviously close, but what about your father? My dad's never been around. Unfortunately, there was not much to tell. He's only been a face in an old photograph. I've always uh, just been the two of us, but that's why we're such good friends. We look out for each other. That sounds like a special relationship. It's uh, worked out pretty great so far. What else you got? Alright, how would you describe yourself growing up? Uh, looking back, I was a uh, dream nerd overlord. Practically invisible. I wouldn't say invisible, just shy. You should have put yourself out there more. Yeah, put myself out there more so you could get bullied more. Yeah, good job, Mom. I wasn't shy, I wasn't the most memorable kid. But now, uh, none of that matters. Ever since we uh, won AME, the whole world knows my name. It was only a matter of time. You were a diamond in the rough. Hey! My experience briefly made me who I am today. Because of it, I landed my dream job. Who would have thought? I'd have ever made it as a... You know what? You're all gonna, gonna see this one coming. YouTuber. Let's be honest, I'm a failure. I'll just be happy once you're finally settled down. I'd uh, leave a lot of things up in the air to be on the show to, this past year. You're telling me, after the special, it's goodbye reality TV and hello reality. And that this could be the perfect opportunity to make this new chapter of your lives whatever you want it to be. I'm thinking life in the Big Apple, a prestigious law firm, and making partner before uh, I'm 30. You game for that job? Kenzie? Help me in. When all this is over, I want to be wherever you are. You two have a lifetime adventures ahead. Feel free to go where life takes you. No matter where we end up, I'm just glad we'll be together. 
I'll cheer to that. And Mackenzie dine with your mom until both of your bellies and hearts are full before, before finally heading back, the sun hovering, hovering low in the sky. That evening. You and Mackenzie join your wedding party in the mansion's kitchen to dissect the day's events. Today was one for the books. We may not just, uh, we have faced the hardest challenge in three seasons. But, we are still one step closer to getting married. I have no clue what tomorrow holds, but tonight we celebrate. The countdown is officially on. And just think, we're making memories we'll be laughing at for years to come. Oh, that's definitely more than I can say for Ivy. What was up with her mom today? Delia's face was so red, I thought she was gonna rage quit mid-challenge. Love how every analogy she makes is a gamer one. <laughs> There's no women like that exist, let's be honest. Did you see how Ivy just shut down? How does anyone put up with that? Before you can get a response, you hear raised voices coming from the foyer. Without a second thought, you race there, and your wedding party hot on your heels. Only to find Rin, Ivy, and Dahlia surrounded by designer luggage. Mama, please. It's just until they get the, sh the shots they need at the wedding show. Everyone else's parents are staying. I promised an executive accommodations, not a room in this glorified frat house. If you were a bigger star, I wouldn't even have to ask. All those years of pageantry and you still haven't learned a thing. Now, Miss Fisher, they don't get the chance to finish before uh, Dahlia shoves a suitcase in their arms and starts for the door. Yeah, mother, this is pissing me off. You can name her, but you can't name Rin? Like, Ren doesn't get a chance to finish before Dahlia shoves a suitcase in Ren's arms and starts to the door. How hard is that? This this whole day in there is getting out of control at this point. I'll be staying at the nearest five-star hotel. Send the limo for me when it's my time for the scenes. A wary Ren grabs as much luggage as they can carry and follow her outside as you all look on bewildered. See, that one was properly written. Wow, Ivy. You're a trooper. I don't know how someone could talk to their kid like that. Or anyone, really. I don't expect any of you to understand. I, your mom said she'd have a five-star hotel room if you paid better attention in your pageant class. That's pretty universally confusing statement. When you're the best, people throw freebies at you like confetti. I've had more than my fair share of fancy rooms and dinners. Meanwhile, there are people who really need those freebies. How hard is it to slap on a tear and prance around stage? Yeah, I should. You have no respect for what I do. Why don't you give it a go, since it's so easy? I'll even give you pointers. Me, as if princess. What about you, John? Are you finally ready to admit being the debutante is more than just smiling and hairspray? We can answer, Mackenzie gently takes you aside. Pageantry is a big part of Ivy's life. If she's willing to share this with you, who knows what else she'll say when her guard is down. If nothing else, you two will be on equal footing when it comes to charming the judges later. Oh, give me a fucking break! I have won every challenge. Why in the f do I need shit from Ivy? Why? Oh, God. You know, I love each and every one of you, right? It's the only reason why I'm going to select this fucking thing, because you people want it. Oh, God, she's smiling. Sense what? You're right. The more we know, the better. Turn to face Ivy, taking in her weary but determined demeanor. You're on. But I think you need this more than I do. Don't flatter yourself. Let's go. Ivy pushes you through your wedding party and heads towards the back of the mansion, with you following closely behind. Great, I get to learn how to act like a debutante. Ivy swings open the doors to the backyard and steps outside as you, Mackenzie, Adam, Jen, and Derek follow the cool night air coating your skin. 
All right, well, how do we do this? To win a pageant, you have to give a great facial expressions and cause drama behind the scenes. Facials and drama? What have I gotten myself into? What happened to the swimsuit competition and wishing for world peace? I see the nerves are setting in. Now imagine trying to perform your talent live in front of hundreds of people. I don't mean to rush the process, but shouldn't we get on with it? It's cold on her. The faster I get this done, the sooner we uh, can go back inside. So what's first, Ivy? Well, when you walk the runway, you have to show the judges poise, crowd, personality, and the other competitors' fierceness. She throws her shoulders back, puts her hands on her hips, and struts dangerously close to the edge of the pole. All while keeping your balance. Are you sure you should be doing that? It's not exactly 82 degrees and sunny out here. Watch and learn. I kind of hope you fucking stumble. She takes long strides, looks straight ahead, and blank stare, before giving a dazzling smile, posing with a confident scowl. I guess I'm up. Get on the... You get your balance on the edge of the pool, hold your head high, and follow Ivy's path. Smile. As you take the next step, the wind blows across the surface of the pool, prickling your skin with cold air. I don't fucking remember. Just... I'm gonna keep smiling. Pulls, winds, and twists, and keep to bite your eyes ahead. I know the scowl ends. Flap your arms wildly as you lose your balance. Oh. Whoa. The last moment when Mackenzie grabs a flailing arm and tugs you back in. I got you. Success, thanks. Alright, Ivy, what's next? Why are you yelling at me? What? Wait, what? I didn't... I... Not warning, Ivy covers her face. Bursts into tears as you stand by shocked. I think... Ivy's finally snapped. Not hardly, ladies and gentlemen, I present a leading cause of drama, the fake cry. That actually is probably the truest words I've ever heard in my entire life. She pulls her hands away from her tear-stained face with a smirk. Used by performers across the globe, the fake cry is the most powerful tool in your arsenal. Actually, the real cry that leads into the fake cry is the most powerful thing in the world. Like, you have to think of the most painful thing in your life. And, yeah. It, it's, yeah. Especially when your whole life is full of pain. Yeah, it's very easy. How does it work? Just close your eyes, take a deep breath, think of something sad, and give it a try. Think of Vince. Think of losing your wedding. Think of McKinsey. Think of losing your wedding. Close your eyes and breathe deeply. Before imagining yourself in an empty church, there's no decorations, no guests, and no Mackenzie. No. Hot, salty tears pour down with no end in sight. And there you have it. As simple as one, two, three. I got it. It was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. Told you. And you should have seen yourself of all the times to not be surrounded by cameras. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe you've done this since you were a kid. One night, I'm already pretty drained. Try knowing your mom can't afford dinner if you don't win. That'll really take it out of you. Oh, please. Let's... No. Don't even try that. No offense, but if your whole life hinders on you winning a pageant to pay for dinner, you probably need to reprioritize your whole entire life. I didn't know things were so bad. Because you were never supposed to. I'm a pageant queen, role model to kids all, of all ages. And a meal ticket to your mother. Ivy flinches as if you'd hit her. Her eyes expose her pain before they harden and scowl sits down on her face. They needed the money. When it comes to survival, you do what you have to. And this special is no different. I've had some of the best coaching in the field, and I've taken home countless titles. Once you realize Amy is just another pageant with an even bigger payout, you'll see just how out of your league you really are. Learn more about Ivy. A mile in her tiara. 
Not with high stakes. I know you had to prove your worth to everyone, but even your mother, but Ivy... I'm not Dahlia. You don't have to prove anything to me. Ivy locks onto your gaze, and as her anger dissipates, she deflates. Her face softens, and for the first time, you notice the dark circles under her eyes. She moves to say it, you claim space next to her, and she finally speaks. Her voice is small. My mom loves me, you know. You don't have to prove that either. As you sit there in silence, her head falls to rest on your shoulder. Oh, God, help me. And isn't this cozy? You and Ivy leave apart as Vince comes into view, an angry sneer on his face. Fraternizing with the enemy, Ivy. Clearly your mother was right. You aren't taking this seriously. What's the matter, Vince? Are you afraid? My niceness is contagious. Don't worry, I'll keep my cooties to myself. You laugh, but his team is only as strong as its weakest link. She needs to toughen up. She is sitting right here. I know where you are. It's the why that I'm struggling with. Luckily, you have all night to explain yourself. He takes a step back and extends an arm in the direction of their guest house. After you. Ivy's eyes drill into Vince angrily as she storms past him back to the resident. With uh, one last look at you, Vince follows. Well, that was intense. Looks like Vance picked up where Dahlia left off. Who volunteers to be married to that? Well, when all you know is tough love, especially everything else pales in comparison. And when it comes from your mother, well, moms can make or break your self-esteem. That's why I'm glad my mother from hell hit the road a long time ago. Mackenzie, you deserved a good mom. Ivy's not the only one who deserved better than what she got. Everything I needed, I got from Natalie and my dad. They're my family. As for my mother, the best thing that woman ever did was leave and not look back. Words have barely left Mackenzie's mouth when Natalie bursts into view, tears streaming down her face. Mackenzie, you gotta come quick, she's here! No. What did I say? What did I can say? Who's here? Natalie chokes back a sob as Mackenzie wraps her no figure's hug. Natalie, who's here? Mom! Called it! Mmm. Mmm. Am I good at this shit or not? Mmm. Mmm. That's why my whole uh, college and everything was going to be around being a game developer. And I gave it up to take care of two special needs brothers, who at the time I only thought was one brother, and he wasn't special needs yet, and the other one wasn't even made. Mommy's home, but will the arrival of Mackenzie's mother spell disaster for your dream wedding? Find out in the next... So, yeah. So, you get the message in the middle of the chapter, right, guys? You should maybe, like... I I'm gonna be honest with you guys, okay? I have 11,000 subscribers on this channel, going near 12,000. I want to thank each and every one of you, but can I ask you for something? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and be real with you right now. I'm not going to do my usual pitch, okay? Right now, I, for medical, for just myself, um, a long story short, is going to be $5,000 minimum. Well, 4,000, but around 5,000 to get the three tests that I really need. Yeah, it's a lot because my insurance turned down, like, and I've gone through appeals and they turned it down. Kind of like, um, you know, my two special needs brothers. Right now, the one has Bechet's, it's an autoimmune disorder. He has, I mean, he just spent 30 days dealing with it um you know before that it was a 28 day hospital stay and yeah like it gets costly i i don't sit and i don't talk about these things long story short you know if you guys have checked my instagram if you guys have checked my gofundme if you guys have checked anything you know i'm hurting right now okay we don't even have a vehicle right now if each and every one of you would 
would share this would also just help a little for just a dollar a month but let alone just a dollar right now if each and every one of you did it you would help me and my brothers get out of the hell hole just huge black hole we're in right now you don't understand yes literally if every single one of you just gave a dollar for it that's it life that's it all of that we we get out of the the current hell hole we're in I know this isn't going to reach all 11,000 people. I wish it would. But please, you know, share such things. Share this channel. Share things to please get the word out. To have people come and join. The more, the merrier. The bigger, the you know, the better. You know, other opportunities open for me that, you know, it just, it would be nice to feel like I was appreciated or, you know, things like that along this this venue of me putting out content every day like today all i've done is run errands without a car came home did this video and i have to leave again because i have to go and for the bicycle that i have i got a flat tire on my way back while carrying diapers for my brothers because they're special needs i gotta go get that flat tire repaired it's gonna be 18 dollars but right now, that's all I got is a bicycle. You know, I got to stop on my way back home, get milk. You know, I got to get a couple of things for my, my brothers to, you know, get them through the next couple of days because tomorrow's supposed to be rain and then snow. And I don't have a car. This winter, I'm going to be out in blizzards walking. So please help. That's all I can ask, you know. So, yeah, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of rich people. There's a lot of big YouTubers. There's a lot of other, you know, big people that all get freebies, that all get handouts. People like me, there is no freebies that has ever come to me. None. So, I'm just asking for a little bit of help. Without further ado, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.